And this is the behavior of most glaciers in the world. Why is this happening? Well, we know, and I'll explain in a minute uh, how uh, we are convinced of that, that this is mostly because of uh, a few changes in the composition in the, of the atmosphere, including uh, the changes in the concentration, the percentage of CO2 in the atmosphere. And these are the numbers over the last 800,000 years, almost a million years. We know that through, thanks uh, the uh, analysis of the uh, air bubbles trapped in the uh, ice in Antarctica. You see that for almost the entire period here, almost 800,000 years, uh, the value has never been higher than 300 parts per million in the atmosphere. A part 30, 300 parts per million, uh, it means the, the volume of a, a can of uh, any soda in a cubic meter to represent what, what we're talking about. A small quantity, but the CO2, CO2 is a heat trapping gas which has uh, very big consequences on, on the climate. And as you can see, we are now actually uh, slightly above 400, a value never seen over the last 800,000 800, 800, years, and we are heading towards much higher value according to different scenarios in the future if the emissions are not curbed uh, significantly. Why is that happening? Well, because uh, we have succeeded involuntarily uh, to unbalance uh, the carbon cycle, which was pretty much balanced. And again, I'm sorry to use uh, an old diagram, which I made a few years ago based on the uh, previous report. Um, but the, uh, the, the numbers here are used to, to explain the concept. And those are, of course, the numbers, the numbers have been slightly updated with the AR5, but the concept has not changed. The idea is that you have behind the carbon cycle two big loops a loop uh, showing the exchanges here between soil and vegetation in the atmosphere. They are labeled in gigatons of carbon per year. Emission through respiration and uh, organic matter decomposition of approximately 120 gigatons per year. A gigaton is a billion ton. But absorption through photosynthesis of the approximately the same amount. In the oceans, you also have a big loop with emissions in the warmer part of the oceans, mostly of a little more than 70 billion tons per year, absorption mostly in the cooler part of the ocean of approximately the same quantity. Actually, if you add up this number going up towards the atmosphere and this number from the oceans, you have 190 billion tons of CO2, of carbon, sorry, and what is absorbed uh, before um, perturbation by human activities is exactly the same amount. And this, I'm simplifying things to get you to the concept, has been the situation for the last 10,000 years approximately. For the last 10,000 years there have been big fluxes going up and big fluxes going down. And so for the last 10,000 years before the industrial period, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere was close to 600 billion tons. This was before the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century. Now, and these are the numbers now for the last decade of the 20th century. We have um, a, a decade which had been uh, analyzed from all perspectives during the uh, AR4. We have um, uh, perturbed that balance by emitting mostly through fossil fuels, but also through deforestation and land use change, a total of approximately 8 gigaton of carbon per year. Now, if we look at uh, the amount of CO2 that is present in the atmosphere uh, every year, we see that every year, at least during the last decade of the 20th century, it's a little more these days, unfortunately, uh, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is larger by a little more than 3 billion tons every year. So we have a, a coverage of, of CO2 around the planet which is thickening year after year. We have an accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, now we emit 8 and only a little more than 3 accumulate in the atmosphere. That means that the other half, I mean the big half, 
is actually reabsorbed, recycled, in part by vegetation, what we call sinks, and in part by the oceans. So those ecosystems and oceans renders us a huge service by absorbing more than half of what we emit in the atmosphere, using the atmosphere as a huge and, and free dustbin. But only half. And the other half, I'm simplifying numbers, is, is accumulating in the atmosphere. And that's, that's where the problem comes from. Now, it's very important to understand this carbon cycle, and uh, it's important to spend a little time on this diagram, even if it means I will have to skip many of the other slides I could have explained, but many of those other slides are self-explanatory, and you will have them afterwards, because it explains some of the difficulty of the climate negotiations. Why is that? Because the fact that carbon and CO2 accumulates in the atmosphere means that emissions from the past matter for a long time. And of course, in the climate negotiations, you know an argument uh, between developing countries and developed countries is that um, developed countries have emitted um, most of the additional CO2 in the atmosphere and have historical responsibility uh, for that additional CO2. Well, the reason for that is exactly coming from this carbon cycle you see here. Another reason why it's important to understand this is that um, it helps to explain and to, to answer actually an argument that is still sometimes used by climate skeptics uh, so-called climate skeptics. I prefer to call them climate confusers because it's a more <laughs> appropriate name because uh, I don't see why they would have a monopoly for, the, for skepticism because scientists have to be skeptic. I am skeptic. If I'm not a skeptic uh, in, my, in my scientific work, uh, I would not be a good scientist. So I don't see why climate skeptics should have uh, the monopoly of that, of, that, um, of that word. So I prefer to call them climate confuser. And, and one uh, example of argument they use is that uh, human emissions, 8 gigaton per year, if we take these numbers, are ridiculously small compared to natural emissions. And they have a point. If you compare 190 and, and 8, of course, 8 is much smaller than 190. So it's true what they see. What they don't tell you, and it's called lying by omission, uh, is uh, that the natural fluxes, the 190, are balanced. But the 8 we emit are not balanced. So you cannot compare those two numbers. It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, because the, the problem is coming from the fact that we are disturbing the balance that existed naturally uh, uh, in the uh, natural fluxes. So if you have understood this cycle, you, you can now answer those climate confusers when they come back, when they come back with that kind of arguments. Now, how do we know that uh, CO2 and greenhouse gases really are the main uh, drivers for the warming. I show you again the uh, warming curve, uh, the, the uh, temperature curve uh, in black that are coming both from climate models. The blue curve comes from climate models which attempt to reproduce the observed temperature using as an input, as a forcing factor, only natural factors, <coughs> volcanic eruptions and the small changes in solar activity, which of course have some effect on climate. But after 1950, 1960, you see the blue curve doesn't succeed to reproduce the observed temperature, the black curve. You have a much better simulation and you see that, that uh, those simulations are better and better. Uh, I mean that the, uh, the spread between the blue and the red uh, are increasing with time. Uh, with the red curve, which is obtained uh, by forcing the same climate models with natural factors and human factors this time. Human factors being greenhouse gas emissions and also the, polluting, the pollutants in the form of aerosols. Um, and so 
the fact that it's not possible to reproduce properly the observed warming without taking into account in the climate modeling exercises the greenhouse gases um, factors led the IPCC to progressively, and you can see here over time what the IPCC said about the attribution of climate change to uh, human factors. Uh, and the last edition of that conclusion was the one in AR5, and that volume was published in 2013. It's extremely likely, a 95% uh, uh, probability, that human influence has been the dominant cause of the warming over the past 50 years. Now we know where the CO2 emissions are coming from, mostly from fossil fuel, but also a, a, a part coming from forestry and land use. In terms of sectors, uh, it's mostly energy, the energy sector, mostly energy pro uh, electricity production, uh, which is uh, the primary driver of greenhouse gas emissions, but agriculture forests and other land users is also responsible for 24 persons. Now, we, have, we are starting to see uh, many other effects than just an average uh, warming. For example, since 1950, more extreme hot days, more uh, heavy precipitation events, often leading to floods, have become more common in many parts of the world. Now, we have looked a little bit about what happened in the past, but we are mostly interested about the future. And we cannot forecast the future. We can only, only try to, to make what we call projections, to use a different word than predictions, uh, on the basis of scenarios, possi possible evolution of the concentration of CO2, for example, and other driving factors, but CO2 is the main uh, driving factor at this time scale. Uh, and as you can see here, we have, to simplify things, uh, a, a top scenario called, in our jargon, sorry for that, RCP 8.5, which is the highest scenario, and uh, on the other extreme, a lower scenario, RCP 2.6, where you can see the, the concentration is ultimately stabilized, more or less, at the present level. Now, if you feed those scenarios in climate models, you have a range of temperature uh, results shown here for the next 100 years, with uh, on the uh, extreme side uh, using the present temperature more or less as, uh, as a reference uh, up to 5 degrees approximately with a range going from approximately 3 to 5, an average of 4 by the end of the century, and in the lowest scenario uh, an increase of an additional one degree if you take the average over the present temperature. And since we have seen an increase of a little less than one degree since the pre-industrial time already, this means uh, some, somewhere relatively close to the two degree increase that is discussed in the uh, international climate negotiations. 